This week we're in Southampton, trying to transform the beaten up old wreck of a 1975 Skimmer 12 hovercraft back into pristine condition. It's a tall order, but veteran hoverhead John Gifford has seen it all before. I've been involved right really since the, uh, the initial contact, in fact before uh, the that hovercraft that size was built, because uh, when I was back at school I built a small hovercraft that was powered by two-stroke engines. Back at school? <laughs> yeah. You want to learn what was funny about that? I didn't think there was a funny line there. Did you just get hold of a lawnmower or something? That's uh, not normal. Uh, no, I guess not looking back at it, no. but it seemed normal no. at the time. Most teenagers are souping up cars and taking yeah. girls, not building hovercrafts no, in the well, back garden. No. It's all very well chatting, but it won't get the baby bath or whatever. So, what are the sort of separate areas? Should we start logically and work our way through? Well, on the outside is the, the, the inflatable structure, and as, all, as you know, all hovercrafts have skirts, so that actually is completely missing on this craft at the moment. So that's, uh, I don't know where it's gone, but it's certainly not here at the moment. The Skimmer 12 is built around an aluminium hull. Attached to this is something like a giant rubber ring, which makes sure it's safe and buoyant on the water. Below this hangs the skirt, which we're missing. The skirt holds in the air cushion on which the skimmer, like all hovercraft, floats. This air cushion is generated by a huge fan connected to the engine. In the Skimmer 12, the engine also powers the propeller, which pushes the craft along. So then the next thing is, what's all about the back, the propulsion? Yes, well that, that's a, obviously a major concern, because there's, um, there's items here which are obviously right back 20, 27 years old. Oh. But the propeller is basically, you know, basically sound, so some of the, the nasty extensive bits are okay. But, oh, I'm um, glad you said that. Nasty mm. extensive bits you don't want to replace. No. And then of course there's that wonderful 70s trim in there, yes. which you really can't draw uh, your eyes from, can no, you? No, no, that's uh, Look at that. that is, uh, but it's, it's obviously got to go back looking like like it was. I mean, hopefully the seats, remarkably, uh, are they've got to be rebuttoned. But I mean, they, the actual fabric seems to have stood up to Nothing it. Nothing destroys is. our environment. <laughs> you know? That's going to be here in a hundred years' time. The hole will have rusted away, but the seats will be here. It's going to be a real challenge to get Mike's old skimmer off the ground. But we're in the right place. John's company has got experts in every aspect of hovercraft engineering, from Mr. Mechanic Darren to the skilled hands of Craftsman Bill. It does look like a bomb's gone off in here, doesn't it? It probably does. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no idea if all these bits are from this hovercraft. Don't know where that came from. Definitely keep that. That's it. We can't have a hovercraft without a skirt, the sort of inflated bit that lifts it up. So we're going to have to find some plans and get a new one made. This rubber's not much good for anything. Underneath these covers is the rubber inflatable which keeps the hovercraft afloat when it's on water. Sliding it out should be plain sailing, but it just won't budge. There's only one thing for it. Cut it out and hope we can repair it later. This is going last bit. Ah. Was that the bit you wanted to cough? <laughs> <laughs> Whilst Claire's cutting through the repairs, I've been revving up the archives again, finding out how the hovercraft caught people's imaginations back in the wacky 60s, when everyone was hovering around. It isn't quite a boat. It isn't really an aircraft. You can't call it a bus. Londoners aren't sure what to make of the thing. Anyhow, it's definitely new. Its official name is the Denny D2 Hover Bus. The fare, a quid a trip. Absolutely the very latest invention to come onto the caravan scene. Making its world debut, the Hover Sprite, a caravan come hovercraft. Directional controls are mounted on the side of the built-in wardrobe. Hovercraft are making a bid to be the farmer's best friend. And that means the farmer can get his work done when he wants. Whereas with an ordinary tractor, it would be impossible. 
Now there's a hopeless position for you, well and truly stuck. Temper, temper. You must get one of those hover trucks with a bit of skirt. Sadly, there are no hovercrafts in the fields or on the Thames these days, and all those crazy contraptions are long gone. But our owner, Mike Pinder, has told me about a couple of chaps who got caught up in their early hover hysteria. Now, most people dream of leaving their wedding receptions in a Rolls Royce or a horse-drawn carriage. But for Nigel Jones and his best man, only one vehicle would do. The Skimmer 12. Well, I've managed to track down Mr. Jones and his best man, and I've arranged to meet them down by the river. Manufacturers, inflatable life rafts, inflatable jackets, and so on. I don't know if these will bring back any memories. Oh, gosh, yes, these are... I've got an album of these. You look a bit younger there, Nige. <laughs> <laughs> As the photos show, the boys' harebrained scheme involved Nigel and his new wife, Kathy, abseiling down from a pub balcony onto the Skimmer 12, which was waiting to whisk them away on honeymoon. We descended down from the balcony of the Samuel Pepys onto the hovercraft. And how did Kathy feel about that? Um, slight reservations, I would say, with the, uh, the order <laughs> well, of the day. That's well put. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's been like that ever since, really. <laughs> I mean, these really were the early days of hovercraft. How did it feel? No one I knew had been on a hovercraft. It was, it was completely different. It was a sort of going away that no one else had ever done or even thought of. So that was quite a nice feeling. From yeah. the spectator's point, it was really spectacular. There was mm. Nigel with a bottle of champagne in his yeah. hand. And as they took off and went, the, the, the wind flowing through their hair and all uh, Cathy's bridal dress blowing out behind it. It's it something I, I can still see that in my mind. Ah, oh, sweet. I love a happy ending. I'm surprised they didn't go on honeymoon in the hover caravan. They really were exciting times, but our skimmer hasn't much of a future unless I can find some plans for Claire, because it seems our craft has taken a bit of a battering in its life. Well, now we've finally got the hovercraft up on its side, we can have a really good look at the hull, and it's actually worse than we expected. On this back corner here, it's obviously had a smash on several occasions because it's got several layers of patches all laid on top of each other and it's not good. So I think we think we're going to just take it all out and start again. Back here where the battery was, well you can see an awful lot of daylight through there, so that's going to have to be patched. And this area here, well this should all be solid holes, but we've had to cut a huge great big hole out of it, which has enabled us to see the main fan which gives the hovercraft all its lift. But Still going to need to be repaired. Luckily, I've got a man onto it in the form of Keith Ellis, patcher extraordinaire. I'll take that, do. Should we go and try it then? Yeah. Is the hull as bad as you thought it would be? Worse. Worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that, Lovely. Keith. Good as new. Yeah. bit out there because when you're trying to lose weight every little helps don't worry girls this air-powered saw comes in a compact handbag size it's a good tool but not enough sparks you all right then Keith yeah okay. ready yeah Ruin my manicure. Riveting up the hull like this is not too different from the way aircraft were made. And that was the big problem for the early hovercraft. Because they sort of flew, people built them like aeroplanes with huge jet engines costing millions. This was why the skimmer was so revolutionary. Mike made it like a boat and put a cheap petrol engine in it. It worked just as well as its expensive jet-powered sisters. And nowadays, almost all hovercraft use the simple technology pioneered on the Skimmer 12. The fancy ones, like this 300-ton SRN4, just sit in museums. Wow! This is it. What? Me, Suggs? 
alone in charge of a giant hovercraft? <laughs> that really is like being inside a giant aircraft. Come on, mate. Let's go. Look, he's flying it as well, look. Sit still. Ignition on. Check. Huge, great propellery things on. Check. These Concords of the Water entered service in 1969 and slashed the time it took to cross to France from two hours to just over 30 minutes. But her four Rolls-Royce gas turbine engines burnt 700 gallons of fuel per hour and cost a fortune to maintain. The oil crisis of 1975 literally blew them out of the water. Now, like the dinosaurs, those jet-powered monsters are gone. And today's hovercraft are closer relatives of Mike Pinder's cheap V12 engine skimmer, based on boat building rather than aircraft technology. I need more power. Can I give you any cup? So, I thought you'd come to look at the archives. Ah, oh, right, yes. Come on. Fair enough. <clears throat> No mucking about now, I'm leaving you in charge. I'm back at the Hovercraft Museum to try and find Mike's early plans. So, Warwick, what have we got here? Well, there's about 15 or 16 drawers of drawings. Somewhere there is a skimmer 12. Great. Start from the top, work your way down, and I'll get the coffee for you. Marvellous, thank you. Hmm. Nothing in there. When he retired, Mike donated all the drawings and archives from his Pindare company to the Hovercraft Museum. I hope what we want is here. Angle projections. No. Plans. But not of a skimmer 12. Oh, hello, hang on. Pindare. Now, this is looking a bit more promising. Hey, hey, hold on. Yep. There she blows, the skimmer 12. Well, if Claire isn't pleased with that, she can blow me down with a feather. Mike's use of simple boat building technology was a big hit, creating a market for small commercial hovercraft. At a fraction of the cost of a helicopter, Skimmer 12 can perform tasks which have hitherto been uneconomical or impossible. He sold over 200 skimmers, many of them going abroad. Aha! Uh -huh. Photographs. Yeah, then. That looks like a skimmer 12. Hold on. Aha! And here's one of a crate with some Arabic writing on. And also, it's got the Pindare logo. Now, I remember Mike saying that our skimmer was shipped to Oman. Well, maybe I should go to their embassy and see if I can find out anything about it. While Suggs is heading for the Orient, I'm going somewhere pretty exotic myself. Malcolm Cox's Rubber Emporium where I hope to fix her inflatable and the skirt. Well, Malcolm, have you managed to make any sense of this holy rubber mess? Yes, yeah, I think uh, we're making progress on it. Is it salvageable? Oh, yes, it's salvageable. This inflatable keeps the hull afloat when it's not hovering, and it's also the attachment point for the missing skirt which holds in the air cushion. But the rubber has rotted away, so it won't inflate. But we're not trying to make it watertight, are we? No, no. What, what we're proposing to do, and we've started work on here, uh, we've made a, uh, a slot in the inflatable cover. Mm -hmm. And rather than try and make the inflatable cover itself airtight, uh, we're going to put uh, airtight bladders inside. Just big bags. Uh, big bags, that's right, yes. We'd better get this right, or we'll be sinking, not hovering. Let's face it, if it can withstand my weight, the sea is not going to be a problem. 
There's no time to celebrate. I'm back in the workshop to inspect the damage inflicted on the duct by our rough handling. What is this stuff? Well, it's a mixture of ply and uh, filler and newspaper and fiberglass. OK, so, so this isn't the original, is it? Oh, certainly not. What no. would the original have been? It would have been birch ply just over this framework. But it has rotted. The ply's rotted, the face is gone, some of the timbers are gone, and they just filled it with newspaper and then skimmed it over with filler and fiberglass. So it's, it's a real bodge up, and it's actually quite dangerous. If some of it had dropped off and fallen into the prop, yeah. it would have done mega damage. Perhaps that accident was a lucky one, because the break in the duct has revealed shoddy repair work in the past. It should be made of lightweight plywood, but it's been repaired with decorator's filler and newspaper. A bodge job and an incredibly dangerous bodge at that. If this filler had shattered, it could have wrecked the prop and sent lethal shards flying. It means a complete rebuild of the duct, something we hadn't counted on. We've really got our work cut out now.